One of the highlights of Skycoin is the Obelisk protocol, which solves the issues that we see in proof of work and proof of stake. Can you explain what Obelisk solves and how it works? Yeah. So Obelisk is the Skycoin's next generation consensus algorithm. For the last decade, we've been stuck in this paradigm of proof of work and proof of stake. And there's several problems with these uh, methods of consensus that are holding uh, blockchain back from being something that can be uh, pushed to a billion users. So before we see um, every single person on earth using blockchain in their daily lives, we have to solve these uh, several issues with uh, the existing paradigm of consensus. And uh, some of these issues are social, relating to the governance structure of the blockchain and how miners uh, the power that miners have over the uh, block creation and how they're abusing that power. And some of these fa um, issues are economic. So for instance, uh, with a Ethereum or Bitcoin, we might be paying a miner uh, a few hundred thousand dollars or even millions of dollars of new coins just to shove a list of trans uh, a bunch of transactions into a list. And so computationally, these mining operations should cost a few pennies. Uh, it should cost a you know a dollar or two dollars a month to run a node that's minting uh, blocks for the network. Obelisk is designed to fix all of the remaining problems in Bitcoin. What Obelisk does essentially is it eliminates mining. So the you have minting, which is the process of block creation, and then you have consensus, which is the process of the network uh, users coming to an agreement over which block is the correct block, which chain is the the dominant chain, and in, in a way that all the nodes will reach an agreement. And so the minting algorithm, what we do is we don't pay people new coins in Skycoin for minting blocks. Because as soon as we give someone a dollar to do this or a dollar to do that, they'll start gaming the system and doing things that we uh, for their own benefit that we uh, can't predict. And, and the reality of human behavior is that no, no mathematical algorithm is ever going to be able to defend against every single possible method that a human being can think of screwing uh, the network. So what we decided was that the safest thing was would be to actually eliminate the economic incentive altogether so that there was no incentive to attack the network. So we wanted to say that, oh, yeah, you can do this thing, but it's not going to benefit you and you're not going to make any money on it and there's no reason for you to do it. And if we, and then we also want to add a, sort of a governance layer. So in the Skycoin consensus, the, all of the nodes engaged in the consensus process are publicly identified by public keys and all of the interactions that the nodes have between each other are in, in a public domain. They're actually they're published openly and peer-to-peer -peer replicated. And what this does is it creates a peer-to-peer -peer ledger of all of the uh, consensus activities that are occurring in the network. So when we set a rule and we say nodes shouldn't do this, um, the other nodes can autonomously and in a peer-to-peer -peer manner determine if the other nodes in the network are actually obeying that rule or policy. And if we see a node if a, that is violating a policy, since the record is public, any other node can download the record and then determine that this node was in violation of a particular policy and then they can start removing their connection to that node and ostracize the node out of the network. So in, in so the idea behind Obelisk is, um, is first we have a consensus algorithm which will work in a perfect world. If all the nodes obey the protocol, the consensus algorithm is mathematically guaranteed to converge. Then we have a public record of the consensus called the public broadcast channel. And what the public broadcast channel does is it allows us to monitor to ensure that the nodes obey the policies and rules that were set down in the consensus algorithm. Every algorithm has a trade-off. So you could use this algorithm and you can attack it this way and you try to, to create a new algorithm that's secure against that attack. You create another algorithm, but that algorithm can be attacked this way and then you create another algorithm that can be attacked this way. And we found out there's actually a triangle and if you, you're secure against this attack, it makes you more vulnerable to this attack. And if you're secure against this attack, it makes you more vulnerable to this attack. So what we decided in the design of Skypoint was that we wanted to, to have immunity for 51% attack. So, and we wanted to avoid catastrophic failure, uh, meaning in particular types of catastrophic failure. So for instance, uh, we said it's okay for bad nodes to slow down the network, but we want to make it impossible for nodes to be able to revert transactions. So we eliminated the 51% attack, but it makes the network more vulnerable to nodes slowing down the network or frustrating the consensus process. 
But then we added a governance layer so we can detect the nodes that are causing a problem and then people can start manually removing them. Uh, and it's a, so we don't, as a central authority, do not remove the nodes. We monitor the network. We say this node's acting bad and then individuals who are connected to that node then can make the decision if they should remove the node, why they should remove the node to improve the network performance or protect against an attack. Obelisk is not just a consensus algorithm, it is a method of auditing for the consensus process that's open, and it's also a, a particular type of governance structure for how we resolve problems within the uh, community when conflicts occur or when 51% attacks occur or when someone tries to fork the network or when a subset of the nodes decides that they don't want to obey the network rules and starts you know, doing funny things. We have a set of rules and we can guarantee mathematically as long as those rules are obeyed that the network will converge and that cons the consensus will be unanimous. But then we have a, a conditions where the rule, where nodes start violating those rules and instead of trying to prevent the violation of the rules we just detect the violation and then people kick those nodes off the network. In Obelisk, the most important thing is we can reduce, there's several things. The first thing is we can have transactions faster than credit cards. So you can walk into a store and make a transaction in half a second without compromising the security of the transaction. So we have both half a second transaction and immutability of the transaction, so no 51% attack. And those are the most important things. So when we have people who want to build on our platform and they want to make a poker game, they don't want to wait two minutes for, if every move in the poker game is a transaction, they don't want to wait two minutes for a transaction because that's too slow to do a video game. But if the transactions are one second, now every single move in the game can be on blockchain and a person wouldn't even notice because it would be fast enough. So we're able to achieve global network consensus in about seven rounds of iteration. And for a global network, one round is about 200 milliseconds. And then we're working on improving that. Why is Obelisk better than delegated proof of stake? So in delegated proof of stake, uh, you're still paying the uh, people creating the blocks massive fees. And so you still have the unsustainability problem and the, the mining cost problem and the inflation problem. But uh, delegated proof of stake, what it tries to do is it tries to allow the blockchain uh, ledger to be democratically controlled by the coin holders. So delegated proof of stake is one method of doing that, but Obelisk is, I think, a, a superior method for doing that because in Obelisk, you still have this aspect of the uh, users uh, controlling the network. So if you, you run a consensus node, you subscribe to the consensus nodes that you trust and you pull in their messages and your, mess your node will process those messages and then publish its own updates and those updates go to the people that are subscribed to your node. And so you have a, a consensus network. And in so in delegate proof of stake, we give the total control of the network to the coin holders. And what we found was all the coin ownership was concentrated in the exchange. So that means if EOS has a fork, it's going to be Binance and a few very large exchanges making the decision about the which fork is going to win, not necessarily the user community. Um, and so the in our system, we have, uh, it's sort of like in the, in the United States, you have the House and you have the Senate and you have uh, different you know divisions of power. So in, in Obelisk, we have essentially two types of democratic voting. One is based upon the coin fees. So we say that the blockchain that has the most burn of coin hours is the dominant blockchain. So this is sort of a staking mechanism where, which shows that the chain that has the most users using it and transacting it will be the dominant chain. So that's one way of checking the, 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 the power of the, the minters and the consensus nodes if there's a network fork uh, or one way of resolving differences. And another is the consensus network. So the consensus network is based upon trust. It's not based upon coin ownership. So we have in Skycoin, there's this, in, within the governance structure of Obelisk, there's essentially uh, there's different groups. So the, the group that creates the coins is called the minting nodes. And that's actually separate than the consensus nodes. And the consensus nodes are different than the coin holders. So um, these are actually three separate groups of people that have different, uh, different interests and that have to be uh, basically kept in check. And so by what essentially we do is the users, the people who have the coins and who are transacting on the network, basically do choose the longest chain because the, the, uh, the coin burn rate, the number of coin hours burned, the fee, is basically a factor in the consensus decision. But the people who are arbitrating over the consensus decision are the most trusted members of the community as sort of elected by the community, uh, not, not elected by the coin holders. So you could have a, a one guy who owns 90% of the coins. 
and he could be corrupt and try to change the rules to benefit himself or give him more coins, and he can still be vetoed by the consensus group. And if the consensus group can also veto uh, changes that would be made by the um, by the majority of the coin holders. So what we have is we tried to actually divide the power in the governance structure between three different groups, and no changes can really be made to the blockchain without unanimous consent of all three groups. You mentioned how there is no financial incentive uh, to running a node on Obelisk on the Skycoin platform. Why would people choose to run a node on Skycoin? So I get asked this question like a billion times, and I think this is actually the stupidest question on earth. It's like, why do people, no one pays me to go online and download porn? Why, why do people download porn if no one's paying them to do it? Why do people use Facebook if no one's paying them to do it? I had to wake up, people wake up in the morning and get out of bed. Why do people do it if, uh, if they don't get paid to get out of bed? So it's like, uh, if you actually look at Bitcoin, the majority of people are not um, being paid to run Bitcoin nodes. The only one making money on Bitcoin is the miners. So there's three mining pools, they run three nodes, and they get paid. But the, the 9,000 people running Bitcoin nodes are paid nothing. So you have to look at this from the perspective of um, not... Basically, if you're, if you're a user using the coin, you're running a node, right? And the user uses the software because it benefits them not because we're paying them to do it. Why do we have to pay someone to do something that benefits them? And so that there's a bit, a bit of confusion that, oh, if you don't pay the people to run your software, why would they use it? And I think it's, it's sort of crazy. They use the software because it's useful to them, not because uh, they're paid to, to, you know, we don't pay them to do the things that benefit them. It's, uh, um, so on the security model, the question is why would people create blocks if they're not paid to create the blocks? And, so in Ethereum and Bitcoin, people are paying millions of dollars a month in electricity costs and hardware to basically produce new blocks. In Skycoin, one of the, the critical, most important things that we found was we had to reduce the cost of mining. If we're going to have a society where every company has 15,000 blockchains and, and you know, IBM has 20 blockchains and, and Microsoft has 5,000 blockchains and Amazon has blockchains and, and uh, Starbucks has a blockchain for their gift card. If we're going to have a society where we have millions of different crypto assets, each on their own individual blockchain, we cannot afford to be paying people $100,000 a block to just put transactions in a list and shove them into a block. We have to reduce the cost of mining because the uh, and until we reduce the cost of mining to basically zero, blockchain will never see any adoption in any mainstream ap application. It's the thing that's holding blockchain back the most as an industry.